Are there other regulations about how many other signs are within the area of that yes. size? Yes, sir. For replacement billboards, in other words, replacement park signs. Right. There's criteria and that is one of them is separation from other such large signs. So if, if they were allowed to put this sign here though, would it are, are there if they, they, they were got enough this separation? size that meets the definition of billboard and then in this case three hundred and seventy two square feet. Um, and then yes, it would be within that distance from other signs. What's the closest those big signs billboard from the across the street in Remington, I don't know the distance. That's Remington. Yes. Wow. It doesn't matter what jurisdiction it's in. Okay. And the nearest big sign is over there across the street in the east by a yeah. little bit of not near. And then also, it's also within the 12 and 50 feet of bakery self storage. Yeah. So if that sign does get replaced, which is a requirement that it has to be, with the permission <coughs> um, then it would be, it would be within the 12 and 50 feet of that. Which would require a variance to be within 1,250 square feet. I mean, 1,250 linear feet. Not for a new sign. I mean, if this were a review, if it were being reviewed, being reviewed as a replacement billboard, we would be looking at this right here. But we're not in this case. Okay. What's the distance between? I mean, you can as a point of reference, which we did in some of the prior cases, but it simply is a point of reference. Matt, what's the distance between this billboard sign and the Precisely, I do not know, but in the area of your packets, which is a little more expanded than this. Because there is some across the street and down a short distance, certainly within the four lot. Anyone here supporting this application? Thank you, Board, for being able to address you guys today. My name is Kerry Harkins from 1700 River Street. As Mr. Martin said, there's a lot to take in here. Um, unfortunately, our attorney didn't show up today, so it's up to me to deliver his talking points. So I would ask you to bear with me in that regard. Um, Fairway Outdoor Advertising is seeking a variance under Section 239E5D8 of the City's Land Development Regulations. Section 230 of the LDR allows for replacement billboards under the following circumstances. It reads, unless otherwise provided, billboards shall be subject to all of the following requirements in addition to all other applicable requirements of this chapter. 
And then it goes on to list those requirements. I won't bore you guys with all those requirements. I want to touch on a few because one is only relevant in our case. The number, I do want to point out though, on line B, uh, the number of billboard faces within the corporate limits of the city of Valdosta shall not exceed the number of faces within the corporate limits of the city of Valdosta as of September 7, 2007. An inventory of these existing faces shall be maintained by the planning and zoning office. We have made an open records request to get that number. We've yet to get it, but it was only done a couple of days ago, so we don't know what that is. But I do want to point out, and Bart, we do have a packet too. Let's pass out. I, I passed. Oh, you already did. Okay. So we submitted evidence, and uh, for the record, uh, we got an email from the attorney, uh, Mr. Cowley, uh, to our attorney that he states we are not at full peak, and if your company wants to make application permit, permit, they can do so. So we know that at this point, by his email, we're not at full capacity on the signs that existed in 2007. Okay. And we also know that the sign we're looking at taking down is ours. So we feel like it's our credit to be able to relocate that sign. Fairways application meets all the guidelines above and again, I didn't want to bore you with all the guidelines. The only variance that we're looking at is for spacing. And that's why we're here today. As demonstrated in Fairwood's application, the proposed replacement billboard meets the restrictions set forth in section 239-9E5D8 because this replacement billboard will be further away from the existing billboard than the sign that is being removed and replaced. And I think y'all are just asking the distances. Currently, we're 125 feet away. And this is the sign that sits on the three stories that we're looking to replace. The new location is double that distance. It's 250 feet away from the closest sign that is in the city of Remerton. Now the staff support, uh, the staff submitted by the city erroneously suggests that fairway needs a variance as it pertains to freestanding signs for a multi-tenant center in community commercial CC zoning. But this is incorrect. The existing freestanding sign has no impact on the replacement billboard. The city's attempt to Treat a billboard as a freestanding sign is inconsistent with the city's LDR. As evidenced by that, figure 230-2 in the sign regulations, billboards and freestanding signs are not one and the same under the city's LDR. This reality is confirmed by the fact that freestanding signs are given their own classification and guidelines per zoning district while billboards are addressed in an entirely different section of the code. Moreover, nowhere in section 230-95 does the LDR establish that billboards are subject to freestanding regulations in the particular zoning districts. Nowhere. The language with respect to a variable message boards found in section 230-96 further shows that freestanding signs and billboards are subject to different requirements under the ordinance. See section 230-96A. The board really need look no further than the variance application that's made by Mr. Mackey, I think a month or two ago, in the Bay Street School, uh, Bay tree self-storage, which was approved by the board on August 6, 2013, and that's also submitted in the evidence that, that, uh, in the packet that we <coughs> There the applicant, whose property was on CC, and had an existing freestanding sign, sought 
to obtain a replacement billboard under section 230-985, just like we are. There, the city did not require the applicant to give a, a bar get a variance from the pre standing sign guidelines in the CC zoning district. As the city is trying to do here, amazingly, the city recommended approval of that variance request under identical circumstances and even took positions in that variance hearing which are exact opposite of what the city is suggesting here. You can compare variance criteria for 2013-14 with variance criteria for 2013-8 under Georgia law, the city cannot take a different approach with respect to fairways request. The city's prior interpretation of its regulations and determinations to allow signs in substantially similar circumstances cannot be reversed now. When you apply the variance criteria used in the Bay Tree self-storage application, you must come to the same conclusion. Here, the existence of the freestanding sign on the property is irrelevant in the application for the replacement sign in our case should be approved. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm here for any questions. I have a question. Go ahead. Is there a billboard on that location that you're replacing? No. Thank you. Any other questions? Anyone else here in support of this application? Would you like to give us any additional information? It would probably be a repeat of what I said. Let the record show there are other people here. Anyone here in opposition to this request? Or anyone here have questions about what is being requested? Is there any conversation in your office? I know we have one letter. Yes, sir. There was a conversation from that same individual who did send the letter that is in your packet. It's Jason Brockman. And they expressed any opposition to your request. They are in opposition to this request. I'm going to step out just a second and address board attorney. Do we need to possibly see if we can get city attorney in to give us their side of this before we try to act on this for 30 days or something? I don't think so. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Any other discussion? The proposal is to put on a new billboard, even though it is an existing billboard from another spot in town. They're requesting to put a new 300-foot billboard on this property, which is on increased total signage to 372 versus 72. And I didn't see any requests for a height variance, so I assume they're going to meet 35 feet. In your packet, you can see the schematic from the applicant. It does show the schematic from the applicant. Okay. I'll be able to see it. There's no issue with the height. Okay. I've got a comment. Go ahead. I don't know how the rest of the board feels. Had I had this in advance, I could have had some time to chew on it. This is a lot for me. I don't know about the rest of y'all, but I can figure this out when I read it. But I honestly cannot in good conscience without having this to look at and to read. Can I make one more comment? Hold on one second. Okay. Because usually we have a packet. You know, I go over that packet and I study that packet, and I may have to reread it two or three times, but I got it when I come to vote. But this is, I mean, you know, he's reading it. I don't follow when he's reading it. I need to get off by myself and read it. Well, this can fall under the guidelines of the Zone Board of Appeals in that 
if you feel like motion is appropriate for you, to make a motion that it be postponed until the next major scheduled meeting, that is a possibility. Okay, before we address that, Matt. Yeah. Just a comment, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the applicant is bringing up an interesting issue, which is highlighted in some of the litigation, but it's a difference of interpretation yeah. of the replacement billboard standards in the LDR. Um, staff's opinion is the proper venue for that is administrative appeal hearing for this board. Um, that I think needs to be reviewed if they submit their appeal application. We can put that on the agenda and we can debate the interpretation of those code sections and make a determination that way. Right. Um, but this, what you have before you, is an advertised variance request, not an administrative appeal. Correct. Right. Right. Very quickly. Yes. I would just like to say that uh, we certainly disagree and nowhere in the ordinance can you find where you cannot take a replacement sign and put it on another property. It's not in there. All the evidence that I gave you today simply states it out. It is not there. I'm not doubting you, sir. We just got this. And I'm of the opinion, personally, that at this point the question becomes if this variance is turned down. If they come back and ask for an administrative, not a wrong, an interpretation appeal. appeal, if we turn it down, does that close the door on the appeal? And if we turn it down and they make the appeal, we rule in their favor, does that? Uh, if they're appealing an interpretation of that code provision, that is not property specific um, unless it is a uh, a question of whether it was uh, applied properly for this property. Uh, but I think it's a general question about interpretation of that code section, whether it's on this property or other properties. So, and some of those questions are also in litigation, which is still not resolved. Well, I think it was made plain in the approval of the prior applicant's uh, variance that on-premise and off-premise aren't together. I mean, it's by the sheer uh, giving of that variance before you said that those don't connect. Yes, that is a good point. <clears throat> uh, it is in our bylaws that should we grant or deny something in a prior case, that does not in and of itself create a precedent that we would have to rule okay. that way the second time. And it's very specific in our bylaws that that is not a situation that we, that we can hang the hat But I think the state of Georgia says that once you make a ruling, you cannot back up and make a different ruling. And I and gave you evidence of that today. And my, my answer to that is the lawyers need to deal with that, not okay. the people. So back to my original question, if, if the variance is denied here, and if things change in the future, you would have, they would have to reapply for another variance, another application, if that happens. Right, and the denial of this variance would affect future variances for here for this property. Right. But if we're not, the same variance, the same, same request. Uh, after any variance. The, the city and the county is like under, under the old, I'm, I'm sorry, Matt, I didn't mean to cut you off. Under the, under the county, they cannot bring back the same request for one year. And that has been interpreted after talking to the county commission and whatnot and the county attorney that if there is significant appreciable change in the request and they can petition the board <coughs> to hear another request within four months on the city of Aldosta. If the request is turned down, there cannot be another request for that piece of property for 12 months. Unless they we could appeal, appeal to the board. Yes. They can appeal to the board. Or to request a reduction in that time frame. But they've got to come before you at a regular meeting 
make the request to have the ability to file another application. And you can grant a reduction in that 12 month time if you so choose. Well, we could appeal the denial to the court, correct? Yes, sir. Correct. You, can, you can appeal any decision this, court, this board makes. Any other questions, any other discussions? Do we want to consider tabling or are we all ready to make a decision for you now? Or not table, postpone it for you to time to read the data. Read the report. Over to you. I'm not giving you a... That's not for me to say what I want. I'll make a motion to table to the December meeting to give us enough time to... I have a motion on the floor for Ms. Hobby to table the request, postpone the request until the next regularly scheduled meeting. Can I amend that motion? Sure. Our attorneys on our county and city level get a chance to review this information as well to make a recommendation to staff as to what their interpretation of this whole issue would be prior to us reviewing this as well. And we'll be better equipped to answer this particular petition in December. Will they be able to do that with litigation in place? They would, but they would have to make a legal judgment as to how this may or may not affect the pending litigation. Also, how an interpretation question in the code might affect their answers for this property. The staff's view is these are two very different considerations and should be dealt with separately. I suppose they may not want to establish a precedent for doing that every time we have an issue. This is not a court of law. We have two lawyers here who could read this document and then offer us an opinion. I 